All right, everyone, welcome back uh, to our governance call. Uh, today, we have a few pretty big and exciting items on the agenda. Um, we're gonna cover the, uh, the prop process, which was uh, introduced um, on the last call by, by Colin from our team. Uh, just an, an overview was inter introduced uh, last time. And uh, today we're going to go into a bit more detail on, on uh, at least the first stage and spe specifically how it relates to uh, the governance process and uh, how that might look going forward. Uh, we're going to also cover the chain migration, uh, how that's going to, going to affect pools and um, how that might, might, we're gonna comment on how that might affect uh, staking CFG um, as far as additional token utility goes and also how that's gonna to relate to uh, the broader governance context as well. And uh, towards the end of the call, we're, um, one of our ambassadors, uh, Rana, was gonna give us a, a walkthrough and, and update on the new governance manual, which, we, which uh, he put together with a, some help from us. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, get it started. Uh, Colin, you're, you're ready? I am. All right, yeah, so yeah, we've had a really good discussion on the, on the forum um, regarding the pop process and the really great post, Colin. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting questions, really poignant questions. Um, so yeah, if you wanna, take us through here and then we can get to some of those questions. Yeah, sure. So um, I just linked to uh, the pop process or proposal for stage one. Um, you know, just as a, to revisit, right? The, the concept of the pop or the pool onboarding proposal process um, is to create a transparent and public way for anyone from the real world to propose to bring assets that they want to finance through the centrifuge protocol um, and take DeFi liquidity uh, to finance those assets they finance those assets um, so specific to governance what we're proposing here in stage one is roughly a, uh, I think we've proposed it in, in seven steps here in stage one and what that means is through those seven steps um, it's not simply that um, any potential proposal just um, skirts through without any engagement or discussion from the centrifuge community. Um, and so actually a key part of the pop process is um, asking the community and asking um, people that participate in the forum every day to begin to look at, understand, and participate and engage with different pops that are, are trying to move through the process and that are relying on the centrifuge community um, to give them input and guidance into their proposal. Um, over the past couple of weeks and months, we've gotten to know a lot of different people and a lot of different groups that we think would be great, but we think it's important that the community have a say and have a voice um, in how these proposals move forward. So specific to governance, there's really two key moments inside of stage one that will require or have been proposed to have um, what we're calling sentiment polls where the, the community will be asked to vote on whether or not they would like this, um, a specific pop to continue in the process. Uh, and those two steps are, first, would they like that um, pop to host a pool party, right? So the concept of a pool party is one that already exists and we've already done a couple of those over the past couple of months, but it's really an hour long session where, the, where someone actually shows their face and actually explains their business and explains more in depth about the collateral and the assets that they're trying to finance. Um, the second stage or the second um, vote that happens in stage one of the, the POP process um, is an ask on whether or not uh, they think this specific POP uh, should go into some type of due diligence, which was really more of a stage two risk assessment um, phase of the POP process. Now, that stage hasn't really been ironed out yet. We don't know exactly what that looks like, but we think we can collaborate as a community to think about what that will look like in the future. Um, so when we think about governance and we think about participation and engagement from the centrifuge community, those are two, two key moments in stage one that, that I think will require the community's input. Um, you can see all seven 
uh, steps there of stage one in the in that post on the forum that I shared. Uh, and if there's thoughts and feedback, if there's ways to improve it, uh, if there's things that uh, people don't understand, um, I'm always here and we can always have a discussion there on the forum. Uh, or if it's important to have a conversation one to one, I'm happy to have it as well. Um, I think the only other thing I'll I'll comment and then pause for questions and comments is that um, we haven't yet seen a pop come through. Uh, we only, I think, launched this or posted this about a week or two ago. So I would expect in the month of May that we'll actually start to see some pops come through. And I think it's a little hard for the community to think about this theoretically, but I think practically, once we see a couple of pops actually come into the pop process, I think it'll actually be a lot more fun, a lot more engaging and a lot more exciting um, for everyone involved in the centrifuge community. So that's that. What can I answer? What can I, what does everyone think? Thanks, Colin. Um, yeah, that's, it's, it's really a great start. And um, yeah, excited to see how it starts to play out. Uh, I think uh, one, one question, well, one, one question, one main question we had on the forum uh, was, uh, I mean, obviously that there's a limit to how much can be decentralized and kind of uh, pushed through and, and voted on or, or determined by the by the community. Uh, obviously, like uh, you know, legal stuff, and there's certain uh, areas where, in risk assessment and and, and credit, where uh, third parties will will always be necessary, right? I mean, so I mean, one 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 person pointed out. I'm not sure if it was Christian uh, regarding the 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 promote uh, the um, proposal of the the credit group, the working group for the, uh, the credit working group. Uh, you know, how might an entity like that uh, be involved going forward? I know that's down the line, but um, I mean, uh, could they potentially be sort of like a decentralized um, aspect of the of the process? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the thinking there is even within the, I think within our community at Centrifuge, there's a lot of people that probably have expertise in different pieces of this process and could be really helpful at different steps and stages along the way um, from a pop conceiving of even financing uh, real world assets on chain and then how that actually makes its way into fruition and actually comes on change is a very, is, is a long journey and there's a lot of work that goes along the way. At the same time, I think it's important for their us to understand that there are levels of expertise, right? And this has been done for sort of centuries on end, um, the underwriting and the risk assessment of assets, that I do think it's important to look to experts and understand those experts' uh, qualifications and their ability um, to provide assessments that the community, community can trust, right? So um, I think it's about, you know, I think the credit group is, in, is a really important piece of the puzzle, um, but how that actually works out and how that actually plays out in front of the community and within the pop process, I think is still to be determined. Um, but yes, critical, I think, to the, uh, the pop process going forward. I'm not sure, Mike, if you can comment yeah, on with your perspective on this, on how the credit group will play a part in the, the pop process. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, think, I think the credit group, um, it's probably a key feature here, both like, you know, to earlier points, um, it's a tough process to decentralize. And there is a lot of, I would say, expert information probably involved in this journey that people spend careers <laughs> learning about in, in kind of like the credit sphere and how to analyze that and how to present it and how to, um, you know, ultimately uh, either underwrite or invest in or originate assets that are um you know not risky or or have a proper or have a proper risk return profile is probably a better way of putting that um i.e you're getting a, a right reward uh in in terms of yield for for the risk that you're taking um with those assets so i think where where the credit group really comes in um is after the community has put forward uh you know an asset class or an asset uh, collateral that meets um, some of the basic criteria uh, that we think you know makes a, a great centrifuge pool, um, the credit group would then do a deep analysis on that, providing the community 
hopefully with a repeatable, reusable framework um, that both has in-depth credit analysis, market analysis, and all that good stuff involved, but also um, you know, a summary that everybody on this call can hopefully understand. Um, you know, to some degree, and really that boils down to how how safe are these are these assets? You know, how risky is the proposition, and where do we think um, you know the right reward is in terms of that risk? Uh, and and I think that's that's where the credit group will come in, and that's really credit underwriting, structuring, um, and proposed pricing, and that's that's where I, I would see them sitting in the process. Hopefully, we can you know have an open dialogue with the community and. Uh, both, you know, achieve uh, a, a high standard in the credit sphere, but also um, present something that is useful, digestible, actionable, and understandable um, for everybody in the centrifuge community. So hopefully it's a learning process, hopefully it's iterative, and hopefully we can be, you know, a key instrument um, in the pop and, and uh, yeah, helping, helping get the right collateral um, onto the platform. Thanks, Mike. I've got to say it sounds incredible if you can, if we can get to that place. So, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say it sounds way better when Mike says it. So I'm really, <laughs> I'm really glad Mike said something. <laughs> Different parts of the puzzle, guys. <laughs> um, back to you, um, uh, Robert. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely very exciting. Uh, so, I mean, um, given given those limits and like the, the understanding that there'll be uh, a certain level of expertise required, um, I, I had a couple of questions. Well, which were kind of just reflected from some of the questions in the forum. Uh, one is, uh, you know, in regards to like the under, underwriting process, I think that's one one area that could potentially be more more decentralized, right? I mean, through the use maybe of an underwriting token, like had been mentioned. Uh, how do you how do you maybe envision that playing out, Colin? Well, I know that's been written about um, in the past by you know some of the other members of the community. Is uh, is Cassidy on the call right now? Mm, I think she's out today. Okay. Um, Lucas, do you have a vision? You want you want to comment on the underwriter token side of this, or what that could look like? Yeah, I mean, I think the well. So we have sort of like we have two levels at which we need to do kind of like credit risk management and pricing um, at at the pool and at the individual asset level. Um, so like basically today like issuers come and they structure the pools and investors can decide to invest or not uh and these assets that go into the pool it's mostly controlled by the issuer they, they of course have like rules there's legal legal and um also technical sort of like uh, constraints of how they can do it right like it's not like i like say I'm, I'm starting a pool and i'm going to uh, finance um real estate and then suddenly oh actually now i'd like to finance cars and i'm suddenly going to start financing car loans if i'm like an issuer using centrifuge right that's not possible um but still like there's kind of like the issuers are responsible for like um providing the, like selecting the loans according to the rules that of, of how this pool should invest um and the uh, the underwriter token the idea of that is actually that um this pricing and selection of individual loans is is um turned over to a decentralized group that doesn't have a single point of failure um, that is hopefully smarter and better at pricing and pricing loans and assessing the credit risk. Um, but it's still like before that can happen, like there still needs to be like the decision by like CFG holders to um, like onboard a pool, um, right? That people can start investing in. And that's what um, basically pop and credit group do, right? So they think that's more looking at the entire portfolio of say real estate loans in the US that this new pool wants to launch versus uh, looking at uh, trade finance receivables in uh, the Middle East, right? And and so they do the work on these asset classes. Um, and, and that's where we need to start because the reality is like the underwriter token, like 
I believe it can solve a lot of these problems, but for that, we need so much more of this activity to happen on chain, like a lot of different specialized underwriters who start using it that will come in the future, but um, we can't, we can sort of like build that um, and not sort of have any way to look at these pools as a whole. And so like, that's why I think like starting with the, with um, sort of like managing which are, are ensuring that the quality of pools that go live on Serenity Future is good and something that makes our ecosystem work and doesn't um, result in like bad assets being financed is where we should start, right? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, thanks, Lucas. Uh, so uh, we had a lot of really good comments and questions in the forum. Um, is anybody here now who wants to articulate those questions or have any other questions they would like to put forth? I have a question that I didn't put into the forum, uh, but just from the participants who'd like to have input. Um, if everybody could chime in with what's the one thing, uh, maybe a word, maybe a phrase um, that we think should be highest priority, just sort of having a litmus test of the community yeah. sentiment. Is it credit scoring? Is it onboarding? Um, is it partner inter integrations? Whatever it might be for you, if you feel inspired, would you mind like writing a, what is the missing link? What's your highest priority for you in the chat? So, just checking this is a general prompt not related to the previous conversation is that correct yes i was um responding because what i heard was if you have any questions on the theme of the forum generally or other questions so um, i didn't okay, mean cool. to break the flow no no it's great so it's other questions and your question is maybe yeah for people to list their highest priorities for centrifuge and do it in the chat. Yeah. Cool. I think this is a nice exercise. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, I, I was kind of referring to the, the conversation we, we, we started now for the pop process, but that's also great to just uh, get a general feel for that uh, here in the chat. Uh, do we have any questions uh, uh, regarding the pop process and in, in relation to governance and, and how that might work going forward? Hey guys, yeah, I, I, I had a quick question. Um, it was just in terms of when, um, when something actually goes live then to vote on, is it, um, is it all gonna be based on the largest number of CFG gets approval? Um, or are there going to be other factors that are considered, like that maybe, um, say, if one person comes in with loads of CFG and gets, uh, which makes up a big, um, yeah, which makes up a big chunk of the vote, maybe it's like someone who's actually been an issuer before, um, so they've actually got a lot of CFG uh, uh, for themselves, so they're able to quite like control the vote. Um, would we look at say, you know, 50 people with smaller number of CFG against one whale with a load of CFG, are those kind of factors going to be considered or, or is it just going to be largest number of CFG wins? Uh, I think this might be, might be a good time then to transition uh, in, on, into the uh, chain migration. Well, I, I, can, I can maybe address the question first. Um, oh my God, that's okay. Um, yeah, sure. So, so first step is actually like we need some sort of like quality gate and process that is is independent of like Colin and and our teams like work in BD to like bring on new pools right and like sort of bring that process into into the community. Uh, the first step will just be a very simple democracy proposal to launch a pool. So you don't need to have the highest amount of CFG. Um, to launch a pool in, in on Serenity Chain, you will need to have 
the majority. So like as long as the majority is for is voting for it, that's fine. And it works like every other on-chain vote that we have um, using like democracy. Um, in the long run, sort of like what this will go into is actually this idea of like basically asking people to stake CFG to support pools, right? Um, and that that once actually, and and we're not launching that just because well we wish we had a hundred times more in development resources, of course, but that's just the reality. But the the sort of like the next iteration of this is like actually instead of having people vote yes or no they can stake their cfg to the pools they want to see launch um, and the pools that have enough staked can start um, to onboard and for them then to grow basically they'll need to continuously increase the support of cfg holders to like basically um, indicate the the validity validity of the pool the the um like that they still think it's a good idea right like now, keep, I'm I'm very vague and very high level, just because um, this is really not much more than an idea. Cassidy so far just posted on the forum, and we've been mulling over a bit, um, but but um, it's it's uh, it's a good um, it's sort of like this is the transition where we want to want to get to. Yeah, thanks, Justin, and thanks, thanks, Lucas. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. So, can we can we go into that, Lucas, a little bit, and and kind of describe, uh, give an overview of the on-chain migration or the chain migration? I'm sorry, and uh, and the the additional the additional token utility that Cassidy kind of put forth there on the forum. Can we just kind of for the Should sake we... of the call? Should we do the Sam's question first? I actually think it's a cool idea. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. I was going to type something in the chat as well. Oh, it's such a hard question, though. It's it's a pretty uh pretty big question, yeah. I'm on my phone, so I can't really type too well. But uh, I would say, as governance facilitator, my biggest priority is decentralization. And increased participation. So everyone, if you're just tuning in or if you went to make a cup of tea or something, we're just doing an exercise in the chat where we're answering the question proposed by Sam, which is what what do you think is the highest should be the highest priority for centrifuge or what is your highest priority? And people are writing in their answers in the chat. Or you can speak it out loud if you like. Wow, good answers coming through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when we speak about, um, you know, getting the distributed base of providers or service providers to do the underwriting, I've seen that decentralized applications succeed to the extent that the service is scalable, repeatable, and can be done by many participants. If it can't be done by many participants because it's hard to standardize, then we shouldn't try to standardize it um, because that's trying to decentralize something that by nature needs expertise of a central group of people. So I'm not sure what evidence we have that you know, trying to decentralize the underwriting um, 
is a, a priority. So would love to hear um, and, and be educated as to why that should be an important concern so that I can think in the same way that everybody else is. Uh, but wanted to see what people are thinking of as the highest priority. Yeah, Lucas, do you, want, do you want to comment on that? And like what, like given the limits of how we can decentralize certain aspects of the protocol, um, like what, why the under, underwriting process is something that we, we want to work on decentralizing? Why we want to work on it or so, I mean. Oh, like what, why, why that, why we would, what, where where there are other areas where we rely on expertise, you know, um, is it are we are we decentralizing it just because we can or not, um, or I mean, what's what's the what's the motivation there? I mean, the motivation is no. The motivation is that actually, um, for investors to invest in, like, if I'm. Let's think of like another DeFi protocol, like an, a retail investor, right? Like a, an unsophisticated investor. Um, they they are usually relying on um, on like analysts or like actively managed funds or investment banks or like their wealth manager or like their four hundred one k provider, right? To like pick a portfolio of assets to invest in, um, and and that's that's like just because well like i'm not a supply chain finance expert or i'm not a real estate expert like how would i know which pool to invest in um like if i if i go and i buy like a like some obscure asset class and that i have no understanding in like i'm it's very unlikely that i actually know enough to do the right to make the right choice um in in the traditional world like what ends up with in this because of this right is that like like it's very hard for people to um to get the good return because everyone that has this information is mostly i think extracting that value for themselves um and then you end up with like banks like passing almost no interest on to the depositors right or like sort of like credit funds being closed off to like mostly like large institutional investors that have this have all this know how. And I think by if we decentralize and bring competition into and, and transparency into this part, this basically this goal of oh, like, is, is this a, determining if this asset is something you want to invest in, right, then you, you build like better financial products for everyone. And you build um, and you I think you end up like, with ev not everybody winning, the, the intermediaries are not wi winning that are able to sort of like make this huge spread today, but the borrowers and the investors and are, are winning because, um, and, and by investors, I mean like the unsophisticated, the, and by unsophisticated, I mean like retail, the passive investors, right? The, the DAOs, the, like whatever, right? Like your savings account, um, because there's less money flowing to um, these experts and and so and so like there's I think we can make like this underwriting system more efficient and more competitive by by doing that and that's why I, I think in the end like we can we can reduce prices right for borrowing while at the same time giving um, more return for for the senior investors and that's that's like the the big long term vision right of making this part of finance more efficient. Yeah, thanks. I, I hadn't thought about it. Uh, Sam, what, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just saying if there were any other comments as well. But to what I'm hearing is um, when we when you think of decentralization, it's not that anybody can do it, but you're saying that we should allow that anybody who can do it is empowered to do it. Right? If you are, in fact, an expert who can uh, underwrite, no matter who you are or where you are on the planet, you should be able to opt into the system. It's not saying anyone can do it, right? 
in other words, um, if I have expertise or not, and I can do it because I can download an open source code and run uh, installs on a node. And that's really when anybody can do it, but that's not the kind of decentralization we're talking about. Uh, right. Because it's not going to be a super standardized service to underwrite a pool. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's not going to be as universal as like everybody who has a computer can run this and, and do it like in the same way that basically you're saying, oh, like you want to become an Ethereum or Polkadot validator, like all you need to do is you need to run some software. But even that is like not, not entirely, that's overly simplified, right? Because you actually need to be able to run this software safely. Um, and that's already like quite an, ex quite a specialized expertise. Um, I think, um, what right. will more likely so that's clear. So I guess what you're saying then is also that the best experts should be standing to gain the most, right? As the competitive dynamic, yeah. uh, in the, even these you know, larger crypto native networks are seeing. So how do we set up our system so that the best underwriters can be uh, standing to gain the most? I mean that that's ultimate so so in in both like the I mean we're talking now I guess about we can talk about both aspects like the underwriting of the individual asset and the um like how do how does a pool launch what are the parameters of of, pool, of a pool that should launch how should it change um right like one is just like what's the how is the risk managed within the pool and the other one is how is the risk managed within the entire protocol? Um, and, and so it's just sort of kind of like a similar challenge. Uh, we're, we are solving this a little bit different. Well, we're solving this where we want to solve this with, with a similar way um, in the, in the idea of the underwriter token, right? Is that you can, that you allow these experts to start staking and they, they earn based on their performance. Um, and so the better their performance, generally the better they, that their return should be. Um, and then actually what I think logically will come uh, on top of it is actually a, a, um, a delegation system so that underwriters who do a good job, who are able to efficiently allocate like, well, like price and price assets and sort of allocate capital in the end, that's what they do, right? They'll, they can sort of campaign to get other maybe less active um junior investors to delegate their their money effectively to them and allow them to do even more um and they might do that for a fee um on the on pools it's the same thing right instead of like using the underwriter token which is is a junior token in the pool uh we use cfg because the the risk is is across the protocol and and like basically the pools are are underwritten or are not underwritten, but in this case, sort of like controlled, managed by by the protocol. And so there we use CFG and CFG is basically staked on different pools, again, by people who think, um, who want to sort of participate in that. I think at, at a pool level, it's going to be simpler. It's going to be a simpler decision because you get sort of this ag aggregation. You need to look at what the issuers are doing, what the underwriters are doing, but you don't need to like decide um, is this, should this invoice that we want that should be financed here have a 7.5% interest rate or a 7.0% interest rate? Because based on your own calculations, the default rate is maybe 1% or maybe 1.5% or 2%, right? And that, that will have an impact on, on, on the work you do, which is, um, different than saying the, the pop today where it's like, how well do the issuers maybe know the business? What are what is the credit group saying in terms of how it compares to what other, like what the industry standard is? Like, are there any are there any concerns? Is it a good access asset class? Is there a demand for these kind of assets in the protocol, which all like are can be discussed and then decided on by by CFG token holders who, at a first point, I right in the immediate future vote on vote yes or no, and and in the future. Um, actually, it'll be staking on individual pools as so, a put. In other words, what I'm not registering is how, about in, how can anybody who can actually do the underwriting is now able to come on centrifuge and bring their pools or assets. If they can, are they able to? Have we removed all the areas that we can remove 
so that they are empowered to and incentivized to come in on the right page. Not yet, not yet, but yeah, so that's what, what is, we're what's working the on. Yeah. What's the missing link in your opinion? I mean, there's, there's, there's a technology that still needs to be built, right? So that, um, um, I mean, the vision would be that that the onboarding process of a pool, the legal setup, right? All of this is so so standardized and so much like of it is actually built on chain and, and sort of like can be done by anybody that we can say, okay, anyone can launch a pool, right? And then you could say, well, if they, anyone can launch a pool without like any help of sort of like core contributors that today know how to deploy the smart contracts, like in the future, it will be, there will be hopefully like a user interface to do this and you won't have to actually know any solidity to do it, but you'll be able to just use centrifuge chain, right? Like that, that's like one of the obstacles. Those are technical. Um, and then there's other, um, there's other things we need to decentralize as well. And we need to build knowledge in the community and start creating processes. And I think that's, that's where the, the pop and the credit group comes in, right? That we, that we like need to, um, start having these discussions with everyone. Um, we start educating TradFi credit experts about how crypto works and how they can use Centrifuge actually to do the work maybe they do today, right? Like the fact is there are good credit underwriters that have this knowledge, as you're saying, they maybe don't know about crypto today. They don't know about what Centrifuge is doing. They have, they, they need to understand how tokens work and how they ultimately will be able to use CFG to vote and basically start making a uh, making their own living maybe by like participating in, in it right that's like one of the i guess hurdles that we have as well um or things for us to work on and, and i think they're the the process and what mike and colin were talking about that's super helpful and then ultimately it's actually the implementation of the underwriter token and staking on 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 pools and that part um making that as um as uh open as as uh, transparent accessible as possible from like a regulatory but also like from just a process is going to be um like a big goal uh great i also There's a lot of good something. stuff in the chat i haven't been able to read them but i anyone who hasn't been looking i think yeah there's some good stuff in there as well yeah uh a lot of good stuff. I see. I see. Fabian looks like you had a comment here. Did you want to speak on that, Fabian, or just? Uh, um, it, it was not on that, but yeah, no. I, I think like we need to give a little break to the team. Um, the, the platform like have so many things to decentralize: buy side, sell side, um, underwriting. Is no way anyone can do it, or even three or four years time time frame. Um, and it's gonna take a lot of time. Um, truth is like no one gonna pour like hundred of million of dollar. Uh, you know, like people are already have hard time. Like I'm talking to like large fund every day. They already have hard time to trust USDC. So for them to think they're gonna trust right away, you know, uh, securitize uh, debenture uh, using blockchain technology is too much risk. It's gonna take time, and we need to be patient as investors, but also as builder. And we are in a bear market, so I think the thing right now we need to focus is find the right legal setup, which I think you did, and continue to build the things like you, you're doing and, and not care too much about TVL and not care too much about the price of CFG. And I think right now, um, I think it's off conversation. It takes, it, takes, it takes time and you're gonna take two to three years, I think, and, and I, I think it's fine, right? Um, and, and the yeah, well, then they're not the first customer, so that's great, but we have Sorry? real on the line and they're not the first customer and they're, they're great. They'll be the laggard adopters. They'll feel like, why didn't I do this before? And that's fine. But um, I guess just saying that um, there are people who will adopt it later and uh, there's this adoption curve shouldn't stop us from looking for the people who can do it now, want to do it now, but aren't unable to do it now. And those are the people we should target and reduce their barriers to entry. Uh, uh, it's it's an amazing conversation. J just to make sure, because sometimes you know English is not my first language. I want to make sure I understand you. You're talking about underwriting, buy side or sell side right now. Which, which one are you talking about? 
underwriting um, the sell side. Those okay. who will be so, bringing the assets and creating the pools and underwriting them to ensure that the Maple users can stake their assets and lend to right. them. Those it's, pools uh, yeah, it's three different problems. If you're talking about underwriting, the best underwriter in the world, um, they want economical incentive, right? And they already are busy underwriting hundreds of millions of dollars every month or, or more sometimes. Depends on the firm, right? Victoria Park Capital, for example, is like a billion dollar fund, right? So they're underwriting a lot. Uh, in order for them to have an interest, you need to have like set side and buy side align, right? You, you need to have an economic incentive to do so. And right now, the economic incentive is not here. You have 60 million TVL and you have like maybe two, two to 300 investors line up. And, and so I don't think the incentive is not here yet. And uh, the technology is not ready either. Um, you don't have a clear onboarding process from uh, USD to, um, to this uh, debenture agreement, securitized debenture agreement. So I, I think it's kind of like thinking people are going to drop everything to spend time underwriting on centrifuge. Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's beautiful. I think it will happen over time. But I think it's way too early to, to expect that from the team, you know? I, I think uh, Colin do his best. Uh, and, and I know, like, um, I know also, like, all, all the team, like, do their best to talk to, like, high-level um, uh, debt, debt fund and, 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 and venture capitalists. And it's just going to take time. Um, I, I don't think there is nothing to be done at this time right now. And you can ask the community to underwrite, but, again, it's going to be... It's not going to be uh, a team, right? For now, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. What, what do you think? I mean, I mean, actually, I think the the credit group is like one, like it's the the credit group is like one way to get those interested people in and start building this expertise. Um, Fabienne and I think actually there, um, we won't have like a large like credit funds say oh like we used to do underwriting for credit in on wall street and now we do it in DeFi from day one to uh, on day one but actually what's already happening is like the crypto curious people within within the industry like come and say okay actually like let me try this out and start participating in these conversations and that's like that's like they're doing this work already right just the fact that we are talking about this right now that's like the to start um, now, like of course, yeah. it's it's really exciting once actually some of this stuff is happening on chain and we have voting and and like our token tokens flow based yeah. on these decisions. But but um, I, I'm sorry, yeah, you can no, start I'm with sorry. that already. You're right. I, I misspoke. I, I didn't say it will not happen. I think it's gonna take time because uh, they are very cautious. Is a uh, branding involved? Like no one to be involved with something is like not secure yet, or you know, no one want to be associated with something failing or, or having a disruption. Um, so I think it's gonna take time. And, and one other person, like it's like three competitors, right? It's like Trufi, Goldfinch, and Centrifuge, and I kind of know them well. And I think you guys are the only one who actually gets your things together. And if someone wins, it's probably you guys. And so I've, I'm not worried about it. Um, but I think it's going to take time. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll definitely take time. And Lucas, to, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt somebody. Go no, ahead. no, go ahead. go ahead. I just wanted to echo uh, what Lucas was saying, is, you know, the uh, traditional finance people coming into underwriting and initiate their pools here because they can make more money and they are having an easy time and they're incentivized to do it is similar to people from Intel and AMD coming and starting their ASIC chip Bitcoin mining farms in the early days. There will be people with expertise that can come and participate and deliver a service that's required in the system that will help scale it. And it's in a way our job as the center of each community to say, here's how uh, you do it. And here's how much you'll make. Come and do it. You're more valued here in our network than your trad by job. And it's easy to come and do it. Yeah, so uh, yes, um, speaking of that, um, 
Mike, are you back on the call? Did you want to maybe take a few, a couple minutes to uh, to speak about the uh, credit, the credit working group? Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm back. Um, sure. Where, where, where do we leave off? Sorry, I had to jump off for for for, for a couple minutes, but um, yeah, it's okay. happy We're to kind of answer any questions there or you know, open up the floor just so everyone can understand the process. But if you want me to just um, introduce it a little uh, more formally, I can as well. Yeah, just to give you a quick recap. We were just talking about the underwriting process and just kind of generally, um, you know, how this will take time and, you know, in which ways we can sort of decentralize this expertise aspect over time. So, but all, you know, how, how it'll be a process essentially. That's, that's yeah, I, I mean, I, I would hope the credit group in some respects lays, you know, lays the the roadmap or or like, or the tracks for, for others to follow into the ecosystem and shows how a group or an initial group of decentralized actors with, you know, various expertise, but in, you know, let's say different asset classes across credit or, um, you know, different uh, different durations or whatever they're they're looking at or their their specialty may be, um, can bring those expertise to a group um, and to the protocol and effectively underwrite um, and and price and structure at the end of the day uh, the various income coming asset classes. And I'm hoping that that group's initial um, success and uh, output shows other underwriters, you know, and other potential actors, not only underwriters, but let's say investors, let's say asset originators, shows everybody um, how the ecosystem is evolving and how more credit professionals can come um, and get involved, uh, whether it's, you know, bringing assets, investing, underwriting, um, joining the credit group. So I think I think that's probably the, the initial goal, I guess, outside of, you know, doing doing the, the service for, for the centrifuge community and protocol that is, you know, the underwriting, but really we also want to encourage and grow that group organically and bring in more um, institutional and credit minds to the fold and, and hopefully, hopefully build, um, build off that momentum. And hopefully it doesn't take too long. I think, you know, I, 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 I would love to report how much interest we've actually had from super high quality, um, you know, uh, proposed members from some of the largest credit institutions in the world, people that are looking after multi-billion books, um, just excited about what we're doing here and taking the first step into, into DeFi. So I think it's been really cool to see um, the momentum start there and, and excited to see where that goes. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So Michael, yeah. quick follow up on that. Um, when you, we have the uh, good, quality underwriters come through, what sort of journey are we greeting them? Uh, here, go to this website and you can do steps A through D and then you get approval from CFG community. And if you do get that, then you have this um, E through G to do, and then you're good to go. Is it sort of standardized enough for us to distribute that base of service providers and make it easy and opt-in? Um, I mean, I think we're, we're, we're still kind of at square one. It's just <laughs> the proposal has been live for a couple of weeks, but we, you know, we have a, we have a Google form out that, that proposed members can fill out. And as we construct that group, what I hope is that, you know, that group of, um, let's call them professionals becomes, you know, that doesn't only look at individual kind of asset collateral coming through, but also, you know, can, can communicate amongst each other and build more standardized processes, um, potentially even, you know, make a spawn a community group of, of credit professionals and interested um, institutional minds that want to start coming into this stuff, give them a place um, to communicate, hang out, and, you know, eventually start um, participating in the centrifuge ecosystem. And I think working towards, um, on the standardization side, I think it's really working towards a, like a standardized framework that we can present 
um, both as, as an output to the community and as, as an onboarding process for potential um, members there. But I think, I think in the first instance, just because I always like to do things stepwise and have proposed it kind of, you know, to keep it, to keep it small um, with an effective group of, uh, let's say, high value participants that are very excited. And then as we like show some initial success, we can look to um, continue building that outward. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. I mean, to, yeah, I mean, that, that speaks to, to Fabian's point of, you know, it'll, it'll take time for the tech and the infrastructure to be ready, but I think we're already on the verge of bringing in, bringing in a lot of um, really good players and a lot of really solid expertise. And I, I think it might be sooner than we think. So. Yeah. I was just going to add another thought, which is, um, you know, like the ideas of like scaling and like the journey and like a simple like A to B to C to D type process is, is ultimately where we, want, where we want to get to for scale. But I think we're still in in the uh, kind of in the phase of doing things that don't scale, right? And trying to find fit here um, as we build the as we build the right processes and protocol. So when when Mike's saying, you know, find a small group of people that can help us do this the right way, and the demand for people to help us is large. That's a great signal, but how that scales is is kind of the journey we're all going on together. That's uh, the only other thing I'd add. Yeah, totally. yeah I, think totally. it's, I think it's important to to have, um, you know, to not make to not kind of like let's say set the table too formally before we really know how how we'll all interact. I think having a group of you know, as, as like a central team, we can, we can kind of postulate and, and put ideas forward. But I think once we get um, a working group together, that's external, we can really see how, how we start interacting um, as, as that group and how we interact with the protocol and the community and each other, and then, and then build outwardly, you know, based on some early um, feedback and kind of data points that we see there. Yeah, uh, it's sort of a, a matter of approach. So one could argue Satoshi didn't ask the miners what the protocol code base should be, but then miners had the, the voice in it anyway. And so we can have a, this is how it works now, and it's ready to go, done, live, release. And then if you're a stakeholder, you can choose to change things out, vote, and you have a voice to edit. But uh, he was the MVP, and I think there is value in saying here's the, the basics of how anybody could be doing the underwriting because, hey, we've done it. Here's the process we followed. You can do the same um, versus let's have a group, a large group of individuals that will never make this their top priority in a joint manner and talk about it and fail to achieve consensus for a month, hypothetically, hopefully not. Um, and then we don't get to that process where uh, there is a unique new party doing the underwriting. And then that would be a recipe for relatively slow debt. And if there's a way to avoid that, where we can say right now, here's the, the one thing and one process you can follow to be an underwriter. Risk is on you. Try it as you will. But here's it, how it is now, and it works. That would be another way to uh, get it. So I'm not saying this is the right approach, but um, it's something that we might want to localize and consider. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the feedback, Sam. I, I really appreciate it. I'm. I caught about 75% of that. You're breaking up a bit, but it would be really cool. I think if um, you could uh, drop some comments maybe on the, on the forum underneath the post, and I'm happy to kind of interact there and we can exchange ideas. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think it would be it would, great, converse, great, great conversation to have. And like, again, it's a super nascent idea and we're, we're experimenting and trying to build the right thing. I'm not, not saying we definitely have the right thing today. So let's, let's get, you know, options and ideas on the table and I'll interact um, 
on that forum post would be great to show to show some engagement. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll make sure to uh, read up and get the full context there as well. Yeah, I appreciate it as always. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Thanks, Mike. Um, we have a, we have a few minutes left. Um, is there any any last uh, questions or comments we want to get in before we start to wrap start to wrap it up? Oh, okay. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Just a question is like, do you think it would be valuable for you guys to reach like a VC club in a, in a different MBAs like? A, you know, I know Utah University have like a VC club. Um, I know Berkeley has a VC club. And, you know, um, you can probably offer a delegation, like a CFG delegation for them to do some work. Um, you would have basically have access to like um, very smart brain who are able to put some work and, you know, help with the underwriting process. I know s 6 z do a lot of uh, uh, delegate, token delegation to um, universities group. Um, I don't know if you want to explore that, but it's a good way to get cheap brand um, power, I guess, and decentralization too, I guess. Does that make sense or not too much? I think so. It's well, like, like once we have kind of like, I mean, the problem right now is delegation is still a bit hard on the technical side, but but sort of like idea of delegating and and involving them, I, I think has worked well for other DeFi projects, crypto projects. Um, I, I wouldn't say in the credit group as like full members because they're really the, actually the caliber of people that Mike was able to attract so far from what I heard is like, those are like credit, like seasoned credit experts that are super excited about working on this stuff. Um, and I think that, that there we have like a good like dedicated we can build a good dedicated group of people um in in the like overall governance i think this is a good idea um and i know polka dots working on um better delegation support um and that that will be something that we could could use to sort of involve like bigger communities if they are interested in sort of like this intersection of of um traditional credit and and DeFi. um I know I'm aware of some of the blockchain club, like sometimes it's a VC club, sometimes it's a blockchain club. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, blockchain at Berkeley would be a great group. So I'm happy to produce and connect. And, and, and they are doing their event in our incubator. So we are happy also to make the connection. Cool, yeah, thanks. That's good. I'll reach out to you guys about it when we're sort of ready to present something to them. Sounds great. Okay, bye for now, everyone. It was great yeah, meeting you all. Thanks everyone for joining and getting in on the discussion. Yeah, that was one of the I think maybe the best uh best stream so far. So thanks, thanks, Colin, Lucas, uh, Sam, Fabian, Mike, everyone who participated. Um uh, we didn't have time to go through the governance manual, but um please uh look on the form for that. Um it's under the uh I'll share. I, can we can we show? Yeah, there we go. Rano, share, share the link here. Um, and yeah, see you guys in the next one. Thank you. See you guys. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Um.